You looking good. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. And some more good mornings. God is good. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Good morning, people. How everyone feeling? Everyone's fine. Everyone is okay. Of course, you know we answer the questions first. We have a few questions. Well, good questions. All questions are great questions when you're dealing with this book. You just have to know how to answer them. We looking good. We looking good. This all started in that 32nd chapter of Numbers. Watch this, people. What is it? Day Wednesday? Okay. Tuesday, Monday. Somebody asked me, it's what Pastor Mike, you showed us who the best man is now. Who is the bride? Okay. Yesterday we went in the book of Revelation. I went to some other scriptures and I showed you who the bride is, right? Okay. Somebody came on here. I don't know the lady, much love and respect for her. So the lady said that the believers are the bride, right? Okay, cool. Then she began to say, you know, that they passed to teach them revelation, this, that, and other, right? Okay, cool. Well, yeah, you answered wrong. So you say your pastor teaching you revelation, but what is he teaching you? Because that's wrong. Okay, now, the thing is, people, listen, listen, listen. I say, don't get in your feelings, get in your Bibles. Because a lot of people come on here in their feelings. For what? We studying the Bible. It's the Bible. We're not talking about no criminology. We're not talking about sexual sexuality. We're talking about the Bible. The Bible. The Bible. Okay, now. The person said, you know, I shouldn't think that I'm the only one who knows the Bible. People. Why in the world would I think I'm the only one that know the Bible when I'm reading from the Bible because somebody wrote the Bible? So if they wrote the Bible, that lets me know right there I ain't the only one to know the Bible because somebody already done wrote the Bible. I'm only reading what they wrote. Okay, so that kills that. All right. <laughs> okay, now, this is what I do say. If you tell it to me, show it to me. Now, you say your pastor teaches you. Okay, now. If you believe that we are believers, that we the bride, you show it to me in the Bible. You show it to me in the Bible. I'll wait, teach me. If I'm teaching you wrong, well, teach me right. I'll wait. Call your pastor and ask your pastor where that's at in the Bible, where it will show you that the believers are the bride. Call him. Because guess what? If you ask my member something, they're going to call their pastor. All right, well, call your pastor. I'll wait. I'll wait. But yet y'all run out there. Say, bro, don't run out there taking up for nobody. Let them dudes take up for themselves. Because if it's wrong, it's wrong. Don't get in your feelings. Get in your Bible. I'm not trying to make you believe something. I give it to you. I go about my business. I'm having fun. <laughs> Whether you like it or not, I'm having fun doing what God has called me to do. And every day he give it to me, I give it to you. Every day he give it to me, I give it to you. Okay, so now we're going to go back. In the 21st chapter of Revelation, people, we're going to dismount that one chapter. We're going to dismount that one chapter. In that one chapter, you're going to really see what you've been missing out on in the Word of God. Now, as I state, they too busy begging. How are they going to teach you something they too busy begging? They too busy trying to get something from you instead of give you something. Okay, I'm well, getting your feelings. Get in your Bible. Okay, now, watch this. Somebody said, Pastor Mike. The Bible said, don't let your right hand know what your left hand doing. What is that about? Okay. We're going to go right there in that fifth chapter. I'm going to grab something out the fifth chapter. I'm going to grab something out the sixth chapter. I'm going to drop you in the tenth chapter of Matthew, right? Now, they say, what well, Pastor Mike, is the vaccine, is the vaccine, uh, is the vaccine, the uh, Antichrist? I'm going to take you in the thirteenth chapter of Revelation and dismount it. People, watch this. In the 13th chapter of Revelation, right? 
it tells us about the Antichrist. It tells us about the mark of the beast, right? Okay, now watch this. In order to understand what's going on in the 13th chapter, you have the first beast, you have the second beast. You have the first beast, you have the second beast. The first beast is going to give power to the second beast. The second beast is a false prophet. Is a false prophet. Okay, now, in order to get this mark, <clears throat> excuse me, in order to get this mark, you have to worship the beast. You have to worship the beast. The second beast, in the 11th verse, in the 11th verse, chapter 13, the second beast, the second beast is a man. Okay. He's going to get the people to what? Follow the Antichrist. Follow the ways of the beast. Okay. Now, we are nowhere near there yet. Because that's your last three and a half years of the tribulation period. We got to first go to, through the first three and a half years of the tribulation. <clears throat> This is why it is so important, like Jesus said. Jesus said, before heaven and earth pass away, before heaven and earth pass away, one dot, one jittle, one title of my word going to be fulfilled. Everything in the law is going to be fulfilled before heaven and earth pass away. He tells us in 24th chapter of Matthew, heaven and earth is going to pass away. Now, in order for the vaccine, which is not, the vaccine, if anything, if anything, in, 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 in the third chapter of 2 Timothy, Paul said in the last days, in the last days, men will be lovers of themselves, they will be boastful, they will be proud, they will be covetous, and they will be truth breakers. Truth breakers mean out of control, out of control. The vaccine and all of that foolishness is just showing us how out of control man has got. All right. I'll let you, fella. All right. Watch this, people. Okay. They're telling y'all about the Delta variants, right? The Delta variants, this, that, and other. Okay. But they tell you, did they tell you about the Delta? Did they tell you about the Alpha variants? Did they tell you about the Gamma variants? Did they tell you about the, um, what is it, the Delta, Beta? Gamma, there's four of them. I'm going to get them right. Give me one second. Delta, beta, gamma, alpha. Did they tell you that? Did they tell you that? Do you know that all four of these variants are about to hit the United States? Did they tell you that? Do you know that? The delta one we know has hit is first. Then come alpha, then come gamma, then come beta. All of these, all of these viruses are on their way. Where they come from? Where they come from, people? But yet we stand in the pulpit every Sunday and tell y'all, really, bro? But then you, you come out, hey, bro, don't come out here with that foolishness. God is preparing us for what's to come. You still talking about something. And then you run, really, bro? Really? Some will, some, some have escaped COVID-19. Okay. Well, what about the Delta? That's going to get some people. What about the Gamma? That's going to get some people. What about the Beta? That's going to get some people. What about Alpha? That's going to get some people. We too busy. Say, bro, these dudes been in these pool pits just running cold game line. I said it once. I said it twice. I'll say it again. I will take you in that 21st chapter of Revelation, just that one chapter, just that one chapter, and show you the whole thing about this book from that one chapter, from that one chapter. You know why? In that 21st chapter of Revelation, John is writing what he saw. But who is John talking to? Talking to God. That 21st chapter was so important. God didn't have no angel. God is talking to him himself. The Bible tells us that they're going to have streets of gold transparent like glass. I ain't never seen no gold look like no glass. I ain't never seen that. Have you? No. But you're running out there behind some man. Man been teaching y'all to follow him. I ain't following no man. 
I didn't pick this book up to teach it. I didn't pick it up to preach it. I picked that book up because I want to know who God is. To hell with man. I don't want no man. I don't want to hear what your pastor got to say. I want to hear what God is saying. That's your problem. You're following a man. Really? I, 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 I remember. I remember. This, this, this had to be in the 90s. At least about back in 89, 90, right? Watch this. Back in 89, 90. Watch this. Just, I'm just getting off a little close, but watch this. I'm in a project. I ain't going to say what project I'm in. I'm in a project, right? Okay. So me and my dude, we standing there. My people, we standing. We, we watching. It was an altercation was going on in the project, right? So the girl is talking crazy to this dude, right? She talk, She going in, right? So the dude, she told the dude, I'm, I'm going to go get my old man. He this and that and that, right? She going in, right? So the dude, the dude said, go get your old man. I've I, I been doing him what I do to you. I told my partner, right? I said, say, bro, you heard what he said? You know what my partner said? He said, yeah, bro. He was knocking him off in the joint. So how you going to go get your old man for this dude and this dude was knocking your man up? But y'all run out there. How you gonna run out there behind somebody? You don't know nothing about that man. But my pastor, okay, well, what you know about it? What do you know about it? What do he know about that book? Say, bro, we're in some times. We ain't got time for all that old plan. We don't have time for all that old lying. And that's what's wrong with a lot of you women. Say, bro, I don't want no, I don't need no woman running out there. I, pastor Mike got Pastor Mike. The Bible says, whosoever will, let him come. Let him come. So fake, you run out my but my pat. Okay, if your path is teaching you something, evidently he ain't teaching you nothing because you're dead wrong according to that book. Bible, baby. Bible, 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 and this dude was having old man, so who she gonna get? <laughs> nobody. <laughs> Keith Sweat say nobody. <laughs> say, bro. Man, say, bro. People, this is why I teach my people at Dropping the Net Ministry to get to know God and get to know God for yourself. Because you already see what time of day it is. Let me answer this lady question. This is very important that I answer my questions first. It's all love, baby. Better might love y'all. It's all good, baby. It's all good, baby. Stop running out there, though, baby. You running out there. You running out there for him. Where he at? Where he? Is he coming out there? No. Because you know why he ain't coming out there? Because he know he don't know what he talking about. That's why he ain't coming out there. But he going to send you out there. For what, baby? For what? According to the Bible And the question was asked What does it mean between the right and the left hand Watch this According to the 5th chapter of Matthew Think not that I've come to destroy the law Or the prophets I'm not come to destroy But to fulfill Verse 18 For verily I say unto you Tell. Jesus was letting us know in the fifth chapter it's going to happen. But now Jesus said, Tell until heaven and earth pass away, because it will. One jot or one title shall it no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. He was always talking about the Hebrew lettering, right? From the letters, I'm talking about from apostrophe to the letter, everything is going to be fulfilled. This is why I say no such thing is a dumb question. Every question is important. Just like Jesus said, everything must be fulfilled. Watch this. According to Matthew, the sixth chapter, verse one, and it reads, Take heed that you do not, that you do not your giving before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, you have no reward of your father, which is in heaven. 
I don't do this to be seen. I do this because this is what God giveth me to do. I know where my reward come. I know where it's coming from. But yet, are we going to do this? We, we ain't got to let the world know what we're doing. We don't have to let the world know what we're giving. According to what Jesus is saying, I ain't finished, verse 2 says, Therefore, when thou dost give arms, whatever you're giving, do not sound a trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. They have their reward. Walking around like you all that. You got your reward. That's what you, your reward, if that's what you want to do. Well, I did this for so-and-so. Say, bro, you know what we did for that church over there? Man, you know, who cares? Jesus said, don't be doing that. You bunch of hypocrites. You bunch of hypocrites. I ain't finished. Verse 3 says, watch this. But when thou does give, let not thy right hand know what thy left hand is doing. Four go with three. Let me read four. Watch this. That thy arms may be in secret. Don't let my right hand know what my left hand is doing. That when I do give, I'm giving in secret, right? But God, they told me I got to give 10%. That's not in secret. That's not in secret. We know what you're giving. And then and then and then some of y'all, y'all get cold played. Pastor heard the number seven. I need who gonna stand with me with $77? Who gonna stand with me with $87? Who gonna stand with me with hundred dollars? And you stand up like a fool with your money. Bible said, don't let your right hand know what your left hand doing. What you do, you do in secret. You just doing that to be seen. God said you already have your reward. That when you give it, it should be done so fast, so spontaneously, that nobody really knew what happened. Nobody. Man, say, bro, I, 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 for real? It ain't one your business, but that's what I did. But they don't teach you that. So y'all standing in line with a $100 line. So y'all standing in line with $50. You got your reward. Don't look for God to give you nothing. You got your reward from all the people that stood around and watch you do it. Cold duck. Cold duck. They be playing y'all in the chat. If I'm lying here, if I'm lying here, if I'm lying, go to bike. But when thou, when thou dost arm, let the right hand know what the left hand is doing, that thy arms may be done in secret, and thy father would see in secret himself should reward thee openly. Nothing is secret about that. Nothing is in secret about that. Cold game. Cold game. What the lady, what the other question, what the lady at? Come in 13 chapter of Revelation. Let's get a little deep right quick. Let's get a little deep. It all ties in the 32nd chapter of Numbers. Why? Because they was in the wilderness. And God said, y'all going to wander around for 40 years till y'all get all of that fake doctrine out of y'all. Well, come back here, Matthew. Since we was in Matthew. Come back here, Matthew. Come back here, Matthew. Since we was in Matthew. Come back here, Matthew. I need you for one second, babe. One second. One second. Before I, before I, before I get the revelation. I hope that lady here. I, I, I want to I help her. I want to help her. According to Matthew. Start at verse 30. But, Matthew 10 and 30, but the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Really, God? <laughs> you bad man. <laughs> I respect your game, baby. Verse 31. Fear you not, therefore, you are of more value than any sparrow. You know how important you are to God? That's what you really need to be worried about. That's what you really need to know. Miss me with all that old jibby jibby jab trying to take up for somebody. Let them take up for themselves. Because evidently, you taking up for them and you running out there talking about what they taught you and they taught you wrong. Well, how that make you feel? How that make you feel? It would make me feel some type of way. 
verse 32. Whosoever there shall, whosoever therefore shall confess, whosoever, whosoever, whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. I'm trying to teach you about no man. I'm not trying to teach you about might. I'm teaching you about God. I'm teaching you about God. Come here, Matthew. Come here, Matthew. Uh -uh. Watch this. According to Matthew, the seventh chapter, verse 15. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep clothing. But inwardly, 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 they are raving wolves. You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thrones or figs or thistles? Even so, every good tree bring forth good fruit. But a corrupt tree bring forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. And neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Jesus was always putting them on top of game. All right, tell me about that one with them two horns that's going to come like a lamb. Tell me about him. Tell me about that one that's going to perform all these miracles. Tell me about him. God sent his son. The son left us the Holy Spirit. The Antichrist is going to send the false prophet. And the false prophet... It's going to be working in the spirit of corruption. After, after the seven churches, people, they need to start teaching y'all this for real. They haven't been teaching it to you. That's why you don't know it. They don't know it. But you're taking up for them. They don't know it. Okay? Hell, I didn't know it till God gave it to me. Okay? Watch this. After the seven churches, there are the seven seals. But Jesus told us those seven seals are the times of sorrow, but the end is not yet. The church is the seventh dispensation of God. Go in the book of Genesis, you're going to see the law, the, the dispensation of law, the dispensation of innocence. We was walking those different dispensations. Dispensation is what govern us. Dispensation deals with time. Dispensation deals with authority. Okay. The seventh dispensation of God is grace. It's the church. This is why God is going to be harder on judging the church generation, the church age, than any other age because we have the spirit of God dwelling in us not like in the Old Testament where the spirit of God will come up on them they will do the work of God and then the spirit of God will leave them okay now this is why I tell y'all say bro y'all got pastor telling y'all sit right here to the anointing to the mantle fall off me on you for real bro for real for real well what about the Holy Spirit and you got grown men sitting right there like a child waiting for something to fall off me on for them. Because that's bad teaching. But if they really understood what, it, what Matthew's saying, what they really understood that. Grown men sitting there. Now you're 80 years old, you done died. Still waiting for something to fall off me on you. This is the kind of foolishness we got in the church, people. If I'm lying, come show me, Pastor. You the one teaching these people to sit right there to some fall off, wait for the anointing and wait for the anointing go. Really, bro? Really? Paul said, every man, every man is given a gift, his proper gift from God. kind of foolishness we've been doing in the church 
Y'all want to put man way up here, and he don't even know the book. Do you all know that you all are kings? Do you know that? No, not, not that Old Testament. Not that Old Testament stuff. I'm talking about what's to come. Do you know that? Let me answer your question, baby. Give me one second. Watch this. Watch this. Let me read this to you. Let me read how important you are to go. According to the book of Revelation, the 21st chapter, watch what it says. I'm going to start at verse 21. You can't go wrong. 21, 21. 21, 21. Watch this. And the 12 gates were 12 pearls. Every several gate was one pearl. And the streets of the city was pure gold as it was transparent glass. I never seen gold as glass. And I saw no temple. And I saw no temple therein. For the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. Say, bro. God, what did you say? What did you say, God? John wrote 21 and 3. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men forever. We need no churches. We don't need no sanctuaries. Ain't no more bishops. Ain't no more apostles. Ain't no more none of that foolishness. That went on during the church age. But because they don't know this, they haven't taught it to you. But you run out there. Go read it for yourself. Since they don't want to read it and teach it to you, go read it for yourself. Watch this. Verse 22. And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temples of it. Of what? The New Jerusalem. What's the New Jerusalem? The New Jerusalem is the bride, man. That's the bride. According to verse 9 in the book of Revelation. So how in the world we, the believers, going to be the bride? Yeah, take my Bible and show it to me, please, lady. Since that's what you've been believing. That's what pastor taught it to you. Tell pastor, show you in this book where the believers are the bride. I know. I know. That's just what I thought. 21 and 23 says, And the city had no need of sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb, and the Lamb, and the Lamb is the light thereof. Revelation 21 and 9 says, I'm coming back 24. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vows full of the seven last plagues. Go to chapter 16. Revelation 16 tells us, And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways and pour out the vows of the wrath of God upon the earth. So John saying in the 21st chapter, one of those angels is showing him what is going on in the ninth verse. For the angel out of the 16th chapter said, And there came unto me one of the angels of the seven of the vows full of the seven plagues, and talk with me, saying, Come high, and I will show you the bride, the lamb's wife. So how in the world, we the believers are the bride. I told y'all, but they been teaching y'all nothing in these churches. Then you run out there. We the, the, really brown Lord and mercy. Come higher, and I will show thee the bride, the lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great high and a great high mountain, and showed me the great city. John, let's slow this thing all the way down, John. I told you you've been faking in these churches. Let's slow it all the way down, John. Okay, John, what happened? Talk to me. Talk to me, bitch. The angel came, right? Okay. And the angel took you higher, right? To show you what? The bride. 
the lamb's wife, right? And when he showed you, what did you see? I seen the great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. Wow. Wow. So that's the lamb's wife, yes. Because see, John, in, in, in verse 2, John, look what you said. And I, John, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem. Same thing you said in verse 10. And I, John, saw the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down from God, out of heaven, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. So how in the world, the church, how in the world is the believers the bride? All that old faking in these churches, all that old lying. Study. Go study. Just tell y'all anything. And y'all running out there. Verse 24 says, I need y'all to catch this, babe. Say, bro, catch this. For real, bro, catch this. 21, chapter 21, verse 24 says, And the nation of them, and the nation of them which are saved shall walk. What? What? And the nation of them shall walk in the light of it. The kings, the kings, the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor to it. Who are the kings? The nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it. And kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor it. We all, we all, when it get to this point, we all are kings. Because of the king of kings, remember that? It's the glory, baby. It's all about the glory. But we too busy faking. We too busy shunning the young man. We too busy hollering and cutting the fool. And they ain't learning nothing about God. Verse 25. And the gates of it shall not be shut. What? What God? What God? And the gates of it shall not be shut. What? The new Jerusalem, the holy city. When you read the Old Testament, go slow. Isaiah was always talking about the new Jerusalem. Jeremiah was always putting us on game about Jerusalem. I think Jerusalem was destroyed, and then I'm, 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 I could be wrong with this one, but I think Jerusalem was destroyed in AD, 70 AD, right? 70 AD, I think. It was destroyed. And ever since that, they've been trying, they've been trying to rebuild Jerusalem. I'm coming back. I'm, I'm coming back. I'm coming back. Come here, come here, come here, come here. Um, come here, um, Corinthians. Come here, Corinthians. Come here, Corinth. Come here, Corinth, babe. I'm gonna need you for one second. Paul was writing to the church at Corinth, right? Now watch this. First Corinthians, 16 chapter. Now concerning the collection. You know how y'all like to say, the way the Bible says you got to have now faith. That just was Paul's way of writing, baby. He said, now concerning marriage, now concerning what y'all asked me last time, now let now, now faith. Let's, 1 Corinthians 16 chapter, verse 1 says, now concerning the collection. <laughs> now concerning the collection. <laughs> now concerning the collection for the saints. As I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do you. Okay? Upon the first day of the week, which is Sunday, let every one of you lay by him and store as God has prospered him. What you say, Paul? My, 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 my. As far as collection, right? The collection, right? The tithes and offerings. Let everybody lay in store 
as God has prospered them. So you say, boy, I ain't got to get 10%, Mike. Hard thing, babe. Oh, what? 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 I ain't finished. Watch this. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him and store as God has prospered him that there be no gathering when I come. Verse 3. And when I come, whosoever you approve by your letter, then will I send to bring your liberty unto Jerusalem. So why we round here faking and we want to use Paul letters to get money out of you. Money, Paul was picking up money for Jerusalem. You want to really talk Bible? You want to really run out there? Paul was picking up money for Jerusalem. Because Paul understood the significance of Jerusalem. Why? He understood Isaiah. He understood Jeremiah. He understood Ezekiel. He understood how all the prophets was always prophesying. Even your minor prophets, Zechariah, Amos, they were always talking about Zion. Jerusalem. All through the Old Testament, it was letting us know who the bride was going to be. But your pastor don't want to read and study. He just want to read and say whatever he's saying and tell it to you, and you run out there like a dove. Cold game. Cold game. Oh, y'all gonna get them Bibles now. Y'all gonna start to read. Why? Even if you just wanna prove me wrong, go read it. <laughs> go read it. <laughs> go read it. Go. Bible, baby. And when I come, whomsoever you shall approve by your letter, then will I send to bring your liberty, your giving, to bring your giving unto Jerusalem. And if it be me that I go also, they shall go with me. Come back here, Revelation. I'm going to answer your question, baby. Give me one second. I love when they run out there. I love it. I just love it. <laughs> run out there for your pastor. <laughs> you and your pastor are going to go pick up the Bible up and start reading. According to Revelation, the 26th chapter, because verses 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 go with Revelation 21 all the way to 27. According to verse 27. Bag it up to 25, Mike. And the gates of it shall be not shut all by day. For there shall be no night there. No night? No night, God? No night, Mike. Wow. 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 And they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. Who? All of the people that are saved. Stop letting people give y'all one verse. People in the cold mess y'all up in these churches with one verse. Verse 27. And there shall in no wise enter. And to it at anything that defile, neither whatsoever work it abomination or make it alive, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. When Jesus sent them disciples out, them 72, he sent them out by twos, right? He said, look, I'm going to give y'all power to cast out demons and to heal the sick the whole nine yards, right? So when they come back, they come back. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Man, even the demons were subject to us. Boy, we were doing our thing. Jesus standing there like this here. Really, bro? Really? Y'all that fake? Say, bro, I told y'all. Y'all was going to be able to do that. Don't be excited about that foolishness. That's a bunch of foolishness. Be excited that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life go read it that's what he told them hurt their little feelings hurt their little feelings you know why because according to the first according to revelation the 13th chapter about to answer your question now babe and i beheld another beast out of the earth and he had two horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon and spoke like a dragon 
Who? The false prophet. Revelation 13 and 11. Verse 13 says, And he do go, and he do great wonders, so that he make fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceive them, and deceive them. Ooh, we casting out demons. Who the hell cares? The false prophet's gonna be doing all that same foolishness. Now what? Now what? How you know if that's really from God or that's a false prophet? Let's talk Bible, baby. Let's talk Bible, baby. You know why we gonna know? Because as believers, we won't even be here. This false prophet in this 13th chapter of Revelation is gonna deal with ungodly people that they never get to know God. But as us for believers, we have the Spirit of God dwelling in us. For they said, if it was possible, if it was possible, he would be able to fool even the elect. He can't fool the elect because of the Spirit of God that dwells in us. This is why I tell y'all every day, say, bro, get to know God and get to know God for yourself. Because you see, we've been faking in these churches. Verse 14. And deceive them that dwell on earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on earth that they should make an image of the beast. That they should make an image of the beast. Is the vaccine an image? Is the vaccine an image? This dude want to do everything that God did. If I go all the way back in the, in the book of Genesis, we were created in the image and the likeness of God. So the false prophet is saying, should make an image to the beast, which had the wants to, which was wounded by the sword and did live. Don't let that go over your head and don't let it scare you. Because I could take it right in Daniel and, and show you during a dream. For the Bible says it was 10 toes made of clay. And the foot was made of iron. But the 10 toes made of clay had dissolved. So the iron foot was still there. This is what the Bible is talking about. He was wounded. He was wounded. Daniel tells us about what? The leopard, the lion, the bear, the beast. Daniel tells us about what? Babylon, Media Persia, Greece, Rome. Babylon, Media Persia, Greece, Rome. When Paul started writing, who did he write to first? The church at Rome. Rome once ruled the world. Rome once was in power. But then Rome got wounded. But well, Rome gonna come back in power again. Oh, that's a little too deep for your path. My bad, I'm sorry. <laughs> Let me finish reading. <laughs> Let me finish. My bad, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. According to verse 15, Revelation 13 and 15 says, And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. That the image of the beast, image, 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 that the image of the beast should both speak. What? What? And cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. The 13th chapter of Revelation. We are now in the last three and a half years of the tribulation period. Once we get to the 10th chapter of Revelation, that's the, la that's the ending of the first three and a half years of tribulation. Tribulation lasts seven years. Three and a half years, eight, nine, ten chapters. Okay, 
the 11th chapter, now God is saying build a temple. This is why I teach you all, you have to know the difference between the temple of Solomon, the temple of Zerubbabel, the temple of Herod, the temple of God, and the temple of the great tribulation. So now in the 11th chapter, now we see the two witnesses. But the two witnesses are going to get killed. In the 11th chapter, we see the first glimpse of the Antichrist. Why? Because now the people, he are paying the people to kill the two preachers, which is in the 11th chapter, which are the two witnesses. Okay. When we get into the 12th chapter, now the Bible shows us this is why everything is happening. Because of the greatest spiritual war that ever took place. Archangel Michael is now fighting with Satan. Archangel Michael has kicked Satan out of heaven forever. He can't never go back up there. Remember doing Job when he went to heaven and, he, and God said, man, what you been doing? Oh, I just been roaming the earth to and fro. But in the 12th chapter of Revelation, he can't no longer go there. But Satan, the dragon, the deceiver, is the same one that go to God accusing us day and night. You heard what Mike said? You seen what Mike did? You heard what they... So now, after he get kicked out of heaven, after he couldn't destroy the baby, after he couldn't destroy the woman, God grabs him. Now, he's mad. He's hot. Now he's out to destroy everything. Everything. For the Bible says, for the Bible says, for the Bible says. And the dragon was hot, angry with the woman, and went to make war with the raiment of her seed, which kept the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus. Old Testament kept the commandments of God. New Testament had the testimony of Jesus. Go back in the 21st chapter of Revelation. It tells us about the 12 gates. Old Testament. The children of Israel. It tells us about the foundation. The apostles. New Testament. The testimony of the apostles. <laughs> Bible baby. Bible baby. So now, I'm going to go back to 13, but watch this in 21. 21 and 10 says, And he carried me in a spirit to a great high mountain and showed me the great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. Verse 11, Having the glory of God in her lights was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. And had a wall great and high, and twelve gates, and the gates twelve angels, and the names written therein, thereon, which are the names, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. That's the gates, the twelve tribes of Israel. Verse 13. On the east three gates, and on the north three gates, and on the south three gates, and on the west three gates. 21 and 14 says, and the walls of the city. And the walls of the city, who? The bride, the wife of Jesus, of the Lamb. And the walls of the city had 12 foundations, and in them the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. Oh, Lord Jesus. Back to 13. <laughs> he turned his own book. <laughs> Verse 15, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak, and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast be killed. Verse 16, and he caused all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a great mark in their right hand, or in their left forehead, or in their forehead. And their right hand are in their forehead. And that no man might buy or sell. Save he that had the mark or the name of the beast. Or the numbers of his name. 
We won't, we even won't, we won't even be here, church. We won't be here. Know how I know? Come here, Revelation. Come here. According to Revelation, the third chapter, verse 9. Behold, behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan which say they are Jews and are not. But do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. Revelation 3 and 10 says, Because thou hast kept the words of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation. The hour of temptation. What's the hour of temptation, Pastor Mike? Well, the hour of, tem of temptation is the tribulation. That's what he's telling the church at Philadelphia. I will keep y'all away from the tribulation. Y'all won't even see the tribulation, period. Bible, baby. Bible study. Oh, I love this here. 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 Watch this. I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. So all that old Catholic all that old Kojic, all that old full gospel, all that old Baptist, all that old foolishness. That's a bunch of foolishness. Why? Because when we reach this point, you're either godly or ungodly. You're either godly or ungodly. Come on in. Hello. Bible, baby. Bible. Bible. Are you going to go, God? That's it on. Tell them about this here. Watch this. According to Revelation, the first chapter, and I will start at verse 11. Saying, I'm Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And would thou see it right in a book and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia. Unto Ephesus, unto Smyrna, unto Pergamos, unto Thyatira, unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. Verse 12, 1 and 12. And I turned to see the voice that spoke unto me. And I turned to see the voice that spoke with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. John, you turn, right? You heard a voice, right, John? And you turn, and when you turn, to see who was talking, did you see Jesus? Did you see Jesus? You seen seven what? And when I turned to see the voice that spake with me, I being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. Go seven golden candlesticks. Revelation 2 and 1 says, Unto the angel of the churches of Ephesus, write these things. Says he that hold the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. If you see it in one, it's in two. If it's in two, it's in four. If it's in four, it's in eight. If it's in eight, it's in sixteen. Book of Revelation, babe. All you gotta do is put one number against the next, the same number, and you're gonna get it. I believe. <laughs> Bible. I ain't finished. Watch this. Verse 13, and in the midst of the seven candlesticks was one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to his foot. Why you, why you say that, John? What you mean a garment? My, what, what, what you talking about, John? Mike. But he had John. What did the garment represent? Mike. He had a robe on like a king. Okay. Mike, he had a robe on like a prophet. What? Mike, he had a robe on like a priest. I'm only giving it to you like I saw it, baby. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one was like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to his foot. Bible, baby. Bible, 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 Bible. And a girded about the paps 
with a golden girdle and his head and his head and his hair was like white wool. Why? Why? Why, John? Why? Because you got these people over here talking about he had woolly hair and he had black. He, that's Jesus. Man, but you already put us on top of game about the son of man. Okay, why the wool? Now, go in Daniel. Because Daniel talk about the ancient of time. What did the ancient time represent? Mike, wool. Beginning in the end. Didn't he say he was Alpha and Omega? That's what the white hair represent. Time. The ancient of time. What you gotta do is read the book. What you gotta do is read the book. But you're too busy listening to him. You're too busy listening to her. Brother told me something yesterday was so important. He said, Mike, people are always talking about pray, 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 right? And I be praying. He said, but I've been listening to you and watching you. I like how you talk to God. So instead of doing all that praying like that be talking about, man, I just go and have a conversation with God. So all you got to do is talk to him. He waiting for you to talk to him. But he, oh, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, praise the Lord. And Lord Jesus, where you at? Really, bro? Really? Dude, dude, turn your book. Show, show, turn your book. Help, help, help my people. A little faking. No matter where he turn it, it's going to line up. I told y'all we've been cold faking in these churches. We ain't been learning nothing about no God. We ain't not learning nothing about no God. You know more about your pastor than you do God. And then, and then, and then, and then, and then, okay, God. And then when things don't go your way, you get mad and leave the church. You get mad and leave the church. That's why when people see you, you know the first thing they ask you? You still over there? You still over there? You know that was their slick way of saying? Man, you still into that foolishness? Before they ask you anything, you run to somebody that would, you still over there? Or oh, y'all still over there? Bible, babe. What you say, God? Man, you done turned the page. You, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I'm, 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 my bad. You turned the page about five times. And his head and his hair were like wool. As white as snow. Hold up, 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 hold up. Hold up, you, 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 you right there. I'm about to mess the whole game up right here, right? I heard a, a brother say, I ain't gonna call what he believed. See, cause Jesus, Jesus was Jesus. The Bible say he had hair like wool. That mean he was a black man, cause we got woolly hair. Ain't that what you say? Let's read the scripture again. Watch this. Verse fourteen, Revelation one and fourteen says, "His head." His hair were like were white like wool. His head and his hair. I need one of my teachers to help me to understand that. Help me to understand. Help me understand the difference between my head and my hair. Why the Bible didn't just say his hair? Because that's what you're saying. His hair. But the Bible say his head and his hair was white. So what you're saying, God? His face was white also? His forehead was white also? Mmm. I need one of my school teachers to help me know the difference, please. Pat the mic stuck now. On some real talk. What's the difference between your head and your hair?
Because if something happened, right? And I tell the officer, well, all I seen with his head was his head. What did he look like? Well, I seen his head. I, I think he was a black man. I think he was a, a Mexican. I think he was a white man. I think he was an Asian. Because you seen his head. Okay, well, what color his hair was? Where's well, Halloween? His hair was white. Uh oh. The Bible says his head and his hair were white like wool. But you've been telling me, well, see, go read the Bible because he had hair like wool. Okay, but okay, okay, okay. But he also had <laughs> a white face. Don't panic. It just was the glory. <laughs> it just was the glory. <laughs> it just was the glory. <laughs> Don't panic. <laughs> it just was the glory. <laughs> I just was seeing if y'all was red with, <laughs> but they won't run their mouth. <laughs> just making a bunch of noise. <laughs> and all the hell represented was the ancient of time, glory. Why? Because in the beginning he said, let there be what? Let there be light. <laughs> and the light represented what? The Shekinah glory of God. Which takes me back in the 21st chapter. And in the 21st chapter, he said there will be no night. Why? Because the glory of God is going to be there and it's going to be nothing but light. Bible, baby. <laughs> no panic. <laughs> I'll, I'll be waiting for him to run out of there. I'll smash. <laughs> God. 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 You scared the people. They were scared? They scared him. You 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 scared him. Revelation 21 says, watch this. Revelation 21 and 5. After. Let's, 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 let's go back to let's go back to two, let's go back to three. Because I, I think the lady was trying to get small talking about the church is the sanctuary. <laughs> They was having church in their houses when it first started. Now what? According to, according, to, according to Acts the 11 chapter, wherever the Bible is, wherever the word of God is, and believers are, <laughs> that's the church. <laughs> right here is the church. <laughs> oh, Lord, Jesus, Jesus. Wherever the word of God is going forth, and you have believers, that's the church. Revelation 21 and 3 is, says, And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Don't miss this, people. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, But, 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 but John, I, I like how you write, John, because you always were specific in your writing. You would say this angel or that angel, a big angel, a little angel, the, 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 the elders, the beasts, whenever they were talking to you, you were specific in saying who was saying what to you. Now in this third verse, in the 21st chapter, you say, and I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, behold, the tabernacle of God is with men forever. Won't need no church. Won't need no temple. Won't need no sanctuary. Won't need none of that foolishness. He will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself, and God himself, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall, not the angels, not the angels, not the lamb, not Jesus, God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more debt, neither sorrow, neither crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. But pastor going to tell you, you won't remember what happened on earth. But God is letting us know no more pain, no more sorrows, no more heartache, no more none of that. Because all that's going to be passed away. 
In reality, you know what God is really telling us? What are you saying, Mike? No more hurricanes. No more fires. No more tornadoes. No more earthquakes. No more type. No more none of that. Isn't that what he said? Isn't that what he said in the eighth chapter of Genesis? After Noah made the altar, when he was dealing with what? The law, the physical law. God said, I'll never curse it again. So when he created his new earth, when he created the new earth, the new earth that's going to come down, we ain't got to never worry about none of that stuff no more in life. This is why I go so hard about everybody getting to know God and getting to know God for themselves. Who would want somebody to miss out on this? With all the pain that people are going through, with all the sorrow people are going through, with all the heartache, with all the disappointment, why should I land? Why should I stand in the pulpit and continue to lie? You already going through something. You already having to deal with something. But they're gonna come a time where God is talking. God is saying this, people. God Himself is letting us know you ain't got to deal with that no more, baby. You ain't got to deal with that no more. All you got to do is believe me. All you got to do is trust me. Watch this. Watch this, people. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Verse, verse 5. And he that sat upon the throne said, God, talking. Behold, I will make all things new. What? What you said, God? Mine. I will make all things new. What? Y'all gonna put on the, 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 the incorruptible. Y'all gonna take that corruptible body up and put on incorruptible, right? Okay, that's gonna be new. I already done created a new heaven for y'all. I already done created a new earth for y'all. I done made everything new. So what he lying about? So what's she lying about? I already showed you in the scriptures. He said, we're going to walk around. Come, 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 come. Come, come in, Zachariah. I need you one, one second, babe. We, 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 we done lied enough to be in the church. Watch this. Watch this. According to Zechariah, I'm gonna hit you. I'm gonna, we, we, no, no, let's go. We go, we, we, go. Go here first. Go here first. Okay, watch this. According to Zechariah, right? Let's start with one. Watch this. And he showed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. And the Lord said unto Satan, the Lord rebuked thee, O Satan, even the Lord that has chosen Jerusalem. Rebuke thee. Is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel. And he answered and spake unto those that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And unto him he said, Behold, I have caused thy iniquities to pass from thee, and I will clothe thee with a change of garment. I know what you accused him of. But they're mine. And I'm going to do a new thing. I'm going to do everything new with them. All they have to do is trust me. All they have to do is believe me. Zechariah 8. Thus says the Lord of hosts. There shall yet old men and old women dwell in the streets. Of Jerusalem. And every man which has a staff in his hand for very age. Zechariah 8 and 5 says, And the streets of the city shall be full of boys 
and girls playing in the streets thereof. Verse 6. Thus says the Lord of hosts, If it be marvelous in the eyes of the raiment of this people in this day, in these days, shall it also be marvelous in my eyes, says the Lord of hosts. Verse 7. Thus says the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will save my people from the east country and from the west country. But y'all been sitting in church, listening to past and them. Oh, come on, y'all. We got to get our praise on. We got to get ready. Because heaven is a, play, a prepared place for prepared people praising and all that old foolishness. Because when we get in the presence of God, all we're going to do is sit in front of God and worship and praise all day. But according to Zechariah, old men and old women will be walking around. The young men, boys and girls, are going to be playing in the streets. Where God in the New Jerusalem, Mike? If they think is if they think it's marvelous now, wait to then. Wait to then. But see, when we all get to heaven, all we're going to do is be in the presence of God and worship and praise all day. The same thing we're doing now, the same thing we're doing now, is what we're going to do then. The only difference is, won't be no deception, won't be no heartache, won't be no pain, won't be no tornadoes, won't be no earthquakes, won't be none of that, no cancer, no, no, no circle doors, no lupus, none of that, none of that. We will dwell with God God sitting on the throne, the lamb running things, and we the kings. I'm trying to get to me, babe. Miss me with all that shanda, but miss me with all that noise. You keep that foolishness to yourself. I said it once, I said it twice. You keep that foolishness to yourself. You know why you keep that fooling to yourself? Come in, Corinth. Come in, Corinth. Just, just don't get in your field. Come in, Corinth. Come in, Corinth. I, I, I don't know why, but, but, but come in, Corinth. They keep that fooling to yourself. According to Corinthians, first chapter, and if any man speaking in an unknown tongue, let it be by two or at the most three. If any man speaking in an unknown tongue, let it be by two or at the most three. And that by course let one interpret. Verse 28, 14 and 28, 1 Corinthians 14 and 28. But if there but there be no interpreter, let him keep silent in the church. And let him speak to himself and to God. Man, shut up. Shut up all that noise. Nobody know, nobody know what you're saying but you. Because the Bible says, the Bible says, but if there be no interpreter, let him keep silent in the church and let him speak to himself and to God. But you get mad with me. I don't hear that foolishness. Ain't nobody, he said two or at least three and one to interpret it. But y'all, oh, shunda be, oh, glory, hallelujah, shunda be, oh, man, shut up, shut up. All that line of these people, all that little faking, and you're getting your feelings. <laughs> Get in your Bible. Watch this. Revelation 21 and 5 says, And he that sat up on the throne said, Behold, I will make all things new. And he said unto me, What, John? And he said unto me, Right. What? Right. So God told you, Mike, God himself told me to write. What he told you to write? And he said unto me, write. For these words are true and faithful. Verse 6. And he said unto me, it is done. So what kingdom y'all building? John said he's seen a new come now. 
Jesus said, our Father who art in heaven, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. John said, he says, done. So all that praying and all oh, God heal the land and all this and that. You heard the chief of police say, say, bro, y'all can't keep blaming this on us. We can't do this. He realized, can't nobody stop what's going on because it's all the plan of God. It is all the will of God. And the church been teaching y'all to go against the will of God. But what you said, John? And he said unto me, it is done. I'm Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. And I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. John, 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 help me with that one, John. Help me with that one. I know, I know, I know when Jesus met the woman by the well and all this and that, John. And, and you know, you, you remember that too, John, because you was present when, when you with all that, right? But John, help me with this, John. John, you says, and I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the waters freely. Help me with what God was saying to you, John. My, he said, Anybody that thirst, that thirst, that, that believe in me, that trust me, that follow me, that would give in, he said, I'm gonna give it to him freely. I'm gonna give it to him freely. So, so John, I, I, I know you probably read this, right? But in, in, in numbers, right? In, 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 in the 32nd chapter, when they was in the wilderness wandering because they didn't fully believe God. Remember, remember in the 14th chapter with, with, with Moses, because they, they didn't fully follow God. So he caused them to run around the wilderness for 40 years until they died because they didn't fully follow God. And now God is saying it's done. And anybody that thirsts after him, he going to give it to them freely. Seek. Ask. Knock. Bam. But the church been teaching y'all run behind things. And y'all looking for houses and cars and all this other foolishness. People watch this. For without faith, it's impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he's a reward of those that diligently seek him. Okay. But if you love the world, you don't love God. Because the world and God is beefing. Watch this. In this sixth verse, what John is saying, that God is saying, if you can overcome the world, you automatically get in. But how many of us can overcome the world? Far too many of us are caught up in the world. We have allowed the world to come into the church. So now, we don't want to leave here because we love the world more than we love God. But the only way to get to God is if we leave this world. But so much in the world is tempting. So much in the world is loving. But he says, I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcome shall inherit all things. He that overcome shall inherit all things. But the church been teaching you to love things more than you love God. You too busy begging for a house. You too busy begging for a car. You too busy begging for a spouse. You too busy begging for this and that. When all you gotta do is get to know God. He that overcome shall inherit all things. And I will be his God, and he shall be my son. God talking. God talking. Not your lying pastor. Not your lying pastor. God is talking. God is talking. God, my God. Father, no man. What do I look like following a man? Father, a woman. What do I look like following the people? I'm a father of God. 
every last one of us need to get to know God and get to know God for ourselves. That's the only way we're going to overcome, big. That's the only way we're going to inherit all things. Because as Jesus said, until heaven and earth pass away, until heaven and earth pass away, I have to fulfill every part of the law. Then when he get into the 24th chapter of Matthew, he said heaven and earth going to pass away before one jot or one jittle of my word fail. Wait, God, wait, 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 in the fifth chapter, you says, till heaven and earth pass away, you have to fulfill every part of the law. Then when you get in Matthew, you say, heaven and earth shall pass away before one jot or one jittle of your word fail. Two different verses with two different meanings. Did you know that? I'm going to read it for you. I love reading for you all. <laughs> and it's not even a bedtime story. <laughs> it's a daytime story that's going to bring life <laughs> to our souls. What you say, Matthew? Come here, Matthew. 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 Watch this. According to Matthew, new glasses. Ha! <sighs> oh Lord, I don't know what it took me so long to do this. Come here, Matthew. Come here, Matthew. Watch this. According to the Bible, where you want to start? Thirty-four. 33, 34, let's start at 32, let's start at 32, let's start at 32, let's start at 32. This is a whole different ball game. Watch this. Better yet, let's go to 21. Watch this. I want to show you something. Matthew 24 and 21 says, For then shall be great tribulation. For then shall be great tribulation. After the sorrows, after, after the sorrows, after the abomination of desolation. Verse 21. For then shall be great tribulation. Such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor except shall be. And except those days shall be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. There should no flesh be saved. Heaven and earth shall pass away. Heaven and earth will pass away. God trying to get us saved, people. That's it. Just trying to get us saved. And except those days shall be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Then if, any, then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, but there believe it not, for there shall arise false Christ, and false prophets shall show great signs and wonders. In so much, in so much, in so much, in so much, that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before, wherefore if you say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, don't go not for it. But hold, if he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. This is why, this is why, people. Don't be believing everything y'all hear these jokers saying in these churches. For real. Get to know God, get to know God for yourself. I ain't finished. That's more to read. Watch this. For as the lightning come out of the east. And shine it unto the west, so shall also come the Son of Man be. Coming of the Son of Man be. For whatsoever carcass is in their eagle, will the eagle be gathered together. Watch this. Watch this. Let me jump. Let me jump. Let me jump. Go. We're going to do this tomorrow. Okay. Let me finish this up. Verse 9. 32. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. Where his branches yet tender, where is yet his branches tender, and put it forth leaves. You know that summer is nigh. So likewise, you, when you shall see all things, know that it is near even at the door. Even at the door. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Heaven and earth 
shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Two different verses, two different meanings, and both times Jesus was letting us know that the heaven and the earth would pass away. Matthew, the fifth chapter, he said, until heaven and earth pass away, the law have to be fulfilled, every part of it. Matthew 24, he is saying, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. What's your word, God? What is your word, God? Revelation 21. Revelation 21. He that overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my sons. My Bible. Touch my Bible. <laughs> <laughs> y'all know about the Bible, love y'all. People be having some questions, God. But guess what, y'all? We're gonna get deeper. We're gonna get deeper. We just gonna we're gonna just dismount. We just gonna It is said that the city, this New Jerusalem, is like Two million two hundred and twenty seven thousand big, wide, long, miles. That's how many miles it is. Two, two, two million and two hundred and some thousand miles. That's how big it is. That's how big it is. That's how big this new Jerusalem is. We gon we just gonna dismount it at 21st chapter. Why? Why? Because how you gonna tell me all that foolishness and you don't know that 21st chapter? That first that 21st chapter, give us the game. Tell us about the lamb. Tell us about the bride. Tell us who the bride is. Tell us about Jacob, 12 children. Tell us about the apostles. It tell us how it's gonna be made, the streets, the whole nine yards. It let us know that we're going to be the kings. It's letting us know about our honor is going to shine like never before in this new city. It's letting us know that God, the whole nine yards, is in the 21st chapter of Revelation. That one chapter. That one chapter. Did you know that? Did you know that? People, stay focused. Be safe. And get to know God. And get to know God. The shot is not the, the, the shot is not the Antichrist. We won't be here. This is why in Thessalonians it is said, except the falling away come first. The sin of the, the, that, that evil one cannot be revealed. As long as the church is here, he can't do his thing. As long as a lot was in Sodom and Gomorrah, God could not destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. But when Lot left out of Sodom and Gomorrah, that's when God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Because God went to Sodom and Gomorrah looking for righteousness. He went there looking for righteousness. This is why, this is why Abraham tried to stop him. God, I know if you find 50, will you destroy it? If, if, if you find 40, will you destroy it? If you find 30, he's God said, if I find 10. If I find 10 righteous people, I won't destroy it. So when the angels got there, they told Lot, man, get your, get your family out of here. God about to destroy this place. Get your family out of there. Because he went there looking for righteousness. This is the same thing that's going to happen in the end of time. Once the church is gone, once the church is gone, now you got the two witnesses. But they're going to kill the two witnesses. There will be no more righteousness. But stay focused. This is what the 144,000 is placed for. He got the 144,000 because the 144,000 are going to be the ones that's going to be witnessing to the people because they have killed the two witnesses. And now we're in the last three and a half years compared to dealing with the first three and a half years and there is no more righteousness in the world. That's why it speaks of Egypt and that's why it speaks of, 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 of Sodom. Because Sodom was no more righteousness. Egypt was bondage. 
we're gonna walk, we're gonna work revelation. That's just it. We just gonna work revelation. We just gonna we just gonna dismount revelation. From 22, I like it back. From 22 all the way to one. We're gonna look in that 22 chapter, because in that 22 chapter, God said that's it. If you're righteous, stay righteous. If you're unrighteous, stay unrighteous. If you're godly, stay godly. If you're ungodly, why? Because the time is over with. In that 21st chapter, we just gonna finish breaking it all the way down. Because the 20th chapter deal with the millennium and then deal with the books. It deal with the first resurrection. It deal with the with the second death. After we come, we're gonna deal with the 19th chapter. The 19th chapter, I gotta take in the 16th chapter to give you a better understanding. Because the 19th chapter deal with the marriage and it deals with the battle. Armageddon and it deal with the feast of the God. Okay, we're gonna put that out. We get in the 18th chapter. Now in the 18th chapter, we're gonna see what this deal with what? The fall of Babylon economy. The economy, God gonna destroy the economy in one hour. God is gonna destroy the Babylon economy in one hour. So at the 18th chapter, now we're in the 17th chapter. In the 17th chapter, now he's destroying what? Babylon religion. Babylon religion. Get that out of here. 16th chapter. Now we deal with what? Them seven last bold judgments. You deal with the battle on again. Get that out of the way. 15th chapter. Now we see what? God said the temple is closed down. No prayers going out. No prayers coming in. Nothing is being answered. Why? Because in the 15th chapter, which is the smallest chapter of Revelation, he going to fill the temple with smoke. That's a wrap. 14th chapter. Now we're putting 144,000 in place. We got to put the 144,000 in place. Why? Because now we're getting into the last three and a half years of the tribulation. Coming up the 13th chapter, now we see that the Antichrist has gotten power. Now he's ready. He's ready to do his thing. But we have to come up the 12th chapter because the 12th chapter deal with the greatest, the greatest spiritual war that ever took place. Because after the 11th chapter, we see that the new temple was built. After the new temple was built, we got the two witnesses and then God said, okay, y'all, I got this thing covered. So now we're getting ready to get in the last three and a half years. But before we get in there, we got to deal with the 10th chapter. Because in the 10th chapter, then Jesus shows up. Jesus is telling them, look, man, this is not here. Eat the book. Why? Because now we got to show them this is the last three and a half years. The first three and a half years has come to the close. So we get in the ninth chapter. We deal with what? We deal with the, 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 the locals coming up out the ground. We deal with the, the angels that coming out of Euphrates River. We get in the eighth chapter. We're going to deal with what? The first four trumpet judge. We're going to deal with the water. We're going to deal with the sea. We're going to deal with the vegetation. We're going to deal with the commerce. After we come out of that, we're going to get in the seventh chapter. In the seventh chapter, we're going to see what? A countless number. We're going to see that the 144,000 is now being sealed. Oh, Bible, man. Oh, Bible. But yet, say, man. My bad to teach us revelation. Really? 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 Okay. Let him keep teaching you that foolishness. Say, bro. Y'all, we're going to run that whole book. In order to know revelation, you got to know them other 65 books. You got to know them other 65 books. If you don't know them 65 books, ain't no way in the world you going to play with Revelation. But, 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 you ask any woman, any man of God, you know why they don't touch it? Because it requires study. It requires research. It requires spending a lot of time with God. And they don't have that kind of time. Bible, baby. According to John, <laughs> according to John, <laughs> Hey, Peter, come here, Peter. Don't you run nowhere, Peter. Come here, Peter. But, beloved, be not ignorant of these things. The day with the Lord, the one day with the Lord is a thousand years, a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us, word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a deep in the night in which the heaven shall pass away. With a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also, and the works that are therein, shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of person are you to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hastening to the coming day of God, where the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat? Nevertheless, we are calling to his promise. Look for a new heaven and a new earth where indwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent that you may be found of him in peace, without spot, and blameless, and account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him as written unto you, as also in all his letters, speaking to them of these things, which are some things hard to be understood. What they that are unstable wrestle as they do the other scriptures unto their own destruction. You therefore be loved. Say you know these things before be well as you also be led away. With the error of the wicked fall from your own steadfastness but growing grace and the wisdom and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. 
to him be the glory both now and forever and ever. Amen. God, I might have nothing but love for y'all, baby. We love everybody. We don't have no beef with nobody. We ain't tripping with nobody. I'm just trying, I'm just trying to do my best to make sure we all get in. That's it. That's it. That we all get in. That we really get what God has for us. That we really get to walk in our kingship. Why? Because he's the king of kings. He's the Lord of Lords. And all of that stuff God has promised to us. He can't go back on his promise. I, I, last year this time, I showed you all 50 promises in the Old Testament that won't come to pass to the book of Revelation. I showed you 50 promises out of the New Testament now that's going to come to pass in the book of Revelation. And this is the thing, people. This is, why, this is what hurt me to my heart, bro. They around here, all that little faking, bro. We missing out on a whole lot when it comes down to God because we are not fully, fully F U L L Y. We're not fully following God. Say, bro, we caught up in man. We how you fully following God, you Baptist? How you fully following God and you Pentecostal? How you fully following God and you Kojic? You ain't fully following God. You following a denomination. You following the denomination. Bible, baby. Don't get in your feelings. Don't get in your feelings. Don't get in your feelings. You know why? Because every last one of those things a man started. This is why when we get in the book of Revelation, we look at those seven churches. Paul had nothing to do with those seven churches. God started those seven churches. That's why God dealing with those seven churches. And the only reason why you see a letter to the church of Ephesus, because when Paul was writing to the Colossians, he had the Colossians to share their letter with the church of Ephesus as well as the church of Laodicea. And this is how Paul get in contact with them. And this is why Paul, when he ran into that 19th chapter of Acts, and he asked them, say, bro, have y'all received the Holy Spirit since y'all believe? And if you don't know the book of Acts, how are you going to tell me anything about the Paulinian letters? This thing be tripping. And we want y'all to really get the game. We're we going to get it, baby. We ain't where I'm going. Where Pastor Mike gone? We're going to learn this Bible every day. Man, man, listen, we're going to get this Bible, baby.